Here's a virtual joystick. What on earth are we going to do with that? Um, we're going to fly my drone with it. We're going to make a web app that has this JavaScript code that runs operating the virtual joystick. And then as you move the joystick, it's going to issue HTTP requests to a web server written in Python that sends commands over Wi-Fi and UDP, uh, user datagram protocol, to the drone. So let's start with this and how this joystick is made. Uh, well, what do you see here? I see a background and a sphere and a cylinder, and then some lights, a light, and then shading. And the light is coming from behind us. And you see it's very bright on the tip of the joystick and a little bit darker on the sides. There's some errors though. I think maybe there's a better way to do this so that you could see a shadow of the handle on the sphere. But because um, the sphere and the cylinder appear to be being illuminated independently of each other. So I don't know how to solve that, but that'd be something interesting to do. Um, okay, let's see how this works. There are two files. There's the HTML file and there's the JavaScript file. And in the HTML file, we have, um, we bring in scripts for P5.js. And then down here, uh, and also for Bootstrap. Bootstrap um, provides some layout and style assistance. And part of that is creating a div with a class of container. And then here's the heading for the virtual joystick. And then here's the div um, that where the canvas will be. Oh, that's interesting. In this typeface, these quotes are really weird looking. These are straight quotes, but they're drawn as if they were typographic quotes. I don't like that. I think I'm going to switch. That's this one, and I'm going to go back to this one, and let's see what that looks like. That's the way it should be. Okay, um, after the canvas, then we have this div here for the X and Y um, positions. So notice that they go from, on X, we go from minus 1 to plus 1, and on Y, we go from minus 1 to plus 1. There's a little bit of work involved in mapping the um, mouse X and Y coordinates which go from zero to the width here, minus one, and zero to the height, minus one, on the y-axis. Uh, anyway, here's this div, and initially it's invisible, so take a look here. If I reload the page, you see it's not there. Also, the joystick is not moving, and uh, it doesn't move until I bring the mouse pointer up into here. And I did that deliberately uh, to avoid the situation where Let's say you're, you bring the mouse to this right edge, then immediately the joystick jumps to that extreme position, and it's just a little bit jarring. So I'd rather have it be as if you were reaching to grab the joystick, and then the joystick responds. This is a P5.js program, so it has a setup function and a draw function, and then I have some other functions that I wrote. So why don't we just go through here and see what is what. Um, in the setup function, we create the canvas. It's 400 by 400. It's in 3D, and then the parent canvas makes it locate itself within this div with the idea of canvas. Now let's look at draw, which is here. And the background color, 60163. I think I went to, I went to, I like to go to um, color.adobe.com it's a nice tool for finding colors that you like so that's where I got the numbers for that background um, here and then the stick length so the cylinder here in p5.js is made by specifying the radius and then the height and I've decided that the stick length is going to be this fraction of the width of the canvas and this is just through experimentation, what seems to fit in there nicely. Okay, 
So here we are with the ambient light of 255. That's just too much. You can um, barely see the effects of the directional light. So let's put this back to being commented out. And without the ambient light, the differences, the, the shading errors are stark and pronounced. So I'm using it kind of partly to um, just smooth out those differences. Okay, so here we are again. The directional light is a white light. You see these 255s, equal parts red, green, and blue, coming from the center, left, right, and the middle, top, bottom, and behind us. So the light shines directly from behind us onto here. And the um, just so you can see what that looks like if I moved it, if I wanted it to come from the left, I could do this. So you see how now the left side is bright, but the right side is very dark. So lots of options there. Ambient material, there are different kinds of materials. There's a normal material, which is, um, well, I'll show you that. Uh, it's kind of unnatural. It, if you imagine that this cylinder is made up, a uh, cylinder in the sphere are made up of triangles, and those triangles have um, a normal a surface, normal vector. Just imagine uh, a line perpendicular to the plane. And then it's that, it's that normal vector that's used to determine the color. Well, for a, a good demonstration, an explanation of, of lights and materials, check out the Coding Train YouTube video. So I'm going to put these back. Now we're looking like uh, this again. Uh, this draws the sphere, and now we have to rotate the cylinder. Um, otherwise, it'll look like this. It'll be like this. So that's, that's not the way I want to envision the joystick. This is supposed to be looking down on the joystick. So rotating it by minus pi over 2. Pi over 2 is a quarter of the way around. And in the negative direction, that brings, brings it um, toward us. So there, here's sort of where it was, and here's where it, where it is with this rotation. Um, I mentioned that, and I demonstrated that you can't move the joystick until you sort of grab it and do that. The way that works is with this movable variable that's defined up at the top here. And that's initially set to false. So down here, when we're drawing, we look to see if, if that's uh, true or false. And if, if uh, the joystick is movable, then we rotate the joystick. And this is a little bit complicated, but it's meant to be kind of readable. Um, I have functions below that give a mouse Y ratio and a mouse X ratio. And those are numbers that go from minus 1 to plus 1. And with the map function... We're mapping those into deflection angles. And max deflect is here, and that's pi over 8 radians. Pi over 8 is a 16th of a circle. So we're mapping the mouse positions, which are these, which I've turned into numbers from minus 1 to plus 1, into a maximum negative deflection to a maximum positive deflection. So we rotate on x. I'll comment out the rotate Z so you can see what this looks like here. So now we're only rotating on X. We can't go this way. And we're using the mouse's Y position to rotate the cylinder on the, on a, on the X axis. Uh, now I'll do the other axis. So now we can't go left. We can't go up and down, but we can go left and right. So here we're rotating on the z-axis, 
And um, that's a little peculiar because you think the z-axis is a line going from behind us to in front of us. But since we did this rotate here, it changes things. Putting that back there. And then after we've done the rotations, we have to do this translation so that the cylinder rotates around the base of it instead of the center of it. So check it out. If I don't have that translation, look what we got. It's a little hard to see. I don't know if you can see both ends of it. No, you can't quite. Um, but if I make the stick length um, bigger, let me just double it so that you can clearly see this. Now that did not help because that's so because the radius also increases as a function of that. So that hides the... Well, you can see that it's rotating around the center of it. There. You can see that without doing the translate that I'm talking about now on line 29, the cylinder doesn't rotate around um, its end. Rather, it rotates around the middle. That's why we do this translate. Then uh, the no stroke is done for this reason. If we have stroke turned on, then we see how these things are drawn. It's kind of interesting to see, um, but not you know, it doesn't look much like a joystick anymore. You can see that these objects are made up out of triangles. They're made up of triangles. Okay, so that's for that. And then here's the here's where the cylinder is drawn, and I've just decided that the radius is going to be one fifth of the length of the stick. Just uh, works out. All right, put this back. Now let's look at some of these other functions. Um, mouse ratio. The three that kind of go together. Uh, the whole point of it is to take these numbers that go from um, 0 to 399 and 0 to 399 and turn them into these um, numbers that go from minus 1 to plus 1. And also at the same time to not allow, um, you know, even though the mouse pointer goes off the canvas, um, the mouse Y um, still increases. So we need to constrain the values to be within the desired range. So let's look at this one first, this mouse ratio. So here's the documentation for it. That's a little small, but I guess you can read it here. Um, so it does a few things. It translates the position to the center and then constrains it within the canvas dimensions and then turns that into a number between uh, minus one and one. So that's what this one does. Constrain is a, a P5JS function. And then this mouse ratio function is used by these two functions here, mouse x ratio, mouse y ratio. So let's consider the mouse x ratio. That uses the mouse's x position, and then it takes half of the width in order to adjust it and constrain it. And the mouse y ratio function is similar, except that we reverse the sign of the result because of the fact that the y values increase as we go down, um, which is not what we want. We want them. So watch y here. We want them to increase as we go up. So that's why we have that. OK, next is this mouse move function, mouse moved. Um, so what does it do? It updates these values here, and it allows the joystick to be moved only after you move it to the near the center here. Um, well, what does it do? It gets these positions, it gets the position of the mouse, um, reshaped into that those minus one to plus one values, and then it considers the activation zone as 0.2 of the distance. Uh, from the center. So once you get, I'll just show you here, so you can imagine where that point two is when it when it when I grab it right there. 
And then here, if, if it is movable already, then we don't need to do these. This calculation is a little bit expensive, this distance formula. There's probably a, a square root going on in there, although with a modern computer, it probably isn't worth worrying about. But why do it every time the mouse moves if you've already done what you need to do? So, um, uh, But if it's not movable, then you find out how far away the mouse pointer is from the center. If it's less than that activation zone, then we turn on movable. And then we remove the invisible class from this XY element. Here's the XY element. Notice it has this invisible class. And with, the, with Bootstrap, if it has the invisible class, it's hidden. When, it, when we remove that class, then it's no longer hidden. So watch again. Reload the page. There's nothing there. But as soon as I move in, watch these will appear here. There they are. That's because of this. Then we look and see if it's movable. And then if it is, we, we grab the X and Y elements. And those are here, these spans. And then we put in these numbers, which are the X and Y values. And then the two fixed makes it so that we only see three decimal places. I think that's the whole program. So our next step will be doing the other things, as I said. This would be the client end of it. And we may have we may have two I may have two students running this, because if you fly a drone, the ones the one I have has two joysticks. So one is for um, up and down and rotation, uh, kind of yawing, rotation about the vertical axis. And then the other one is forward, back, left, and right. So what we can do is have, have, have two students. Each one runs this program, but one of the joysticks is hooked up to uh, that one group of functions, and the other one is hooked up to the other group. So the two students have to um, coordinate, and they're, they're individually controlling different parts of the flying. So that should be kind of fun to see. So that's, you might see that coming up. OK, that is the end of it. Oh, yeah, where is the code? The code, I should put a link to the code on the page, but if you go to github.com DC Brichetti, and then you go to web games, and then you go to P5JS, then you go to virtual joystick, you'll find it in here. So there's the HTML file we looked at, and here's the JavaScript file we just looked at. Okay. See you later.